everyone, my name is Kelsey from Wilderness, and this is an updated version of my video on how to render beeswax in a crock pot that I had made my first year beekeeping. Since that video was made, my hive has actually continued on for almost five years, but unfortunately they absconded sometime in the fall. In a way though, it was slightly convenient given that you should typically replace your comb and frames every four years for the health of your hive. You can use beeswax from your hive to make things like lip balm, candles, and in our case we'll be using it to turn into Christmas ornaments this holiday season since a family of mice took advantage of the empty hive and moved in. Despite the fact that rendering would typically kill any bacteria and germs, I just feel decorations are a better use for this wax just in case. So as you can see in the video, I am pulling the wax comb that the bees had made off of the wire foundation that I had initially installed um, on my frames. Obviously you don't want any wires in your, in your wax, so I'm just kind of breaking them off into chunks and chucking them into the sink. After making sure the comb is all wire free, I am now just gently rinsing off the comb of any pine needles, debris, dirt. Um, I kind of made a mess when I was uh, collecting it outside, so it's got some like rocks in it from, and gravel in it from my driveway, so I'm just kind of rinsing it under some warmish to hot water. Um, it melts it just a little bit when you do that. This step isn't totally necessary, but I just kind of wanted to get rid of as much debris as possible before throwing it into my crock pot. Also, if you have kids, this is a really fun activity for them. I got my triplet two and a half year olds involved in this step as well as some other steps, but this was fun. They got to rinse off the honeycomb into the sink. When it comes time to actually melt the comb in your crock pot, you're gonna want some sort of filter. In my case, I just used some cheesecloth that I was able to buy on Amazon. The cheesecloth is going to catch any propolis, bee guts, bee gunk, anything that you're not gonna want in your wax to um, purify it better. You can just drape it right over the sides of the crock pot and then I'll show you how to kind of close it up after we get all the water and rest of the honeycomb in there. You're going to want to add about three cups of water to your crock pot and reason being is because one, the wax is going to sit on top of the water once it's all done um, and it'll make it easier to get out of the crock pot once it's all hardened. And two, in order for it to really kind of melt and create heat, uh, the water is gonna help do that in the crock pot with the lid on top of it. Your next step is going to be just adding the comb to the crock pot. Uh, fill it up as much as you want, as long as you can get the lid on it nice and tight. I always place my lid right on top of the edge of the cheesecloth just to keep it set in place. And then I will usually wrap the cheesecloth up over the cover. I just don't want it touching the sides. I'm just like terrified of fire or something. So just to keep it off the sides of the crock pot, I just kind of fold it up and tie it uh, on the top here. All right, so it's been about three to four hours on high. Um, I actually, it's actually been longer than that. I just kept adding the wax to it. So I'll show you what it looks like in there. So if we lift all this up. You can see all that. That's wax coming out. And then all this gunk that doesn't get melted down gets tossed. You can actually use it for your garden. It'll have some good uh, properties in there. And then all that inside is kind of what it looks like in the crock pot right now. So some of that will get melted down and then some of it will just kind of remain gunky like that. I'm gonna break it up a little bit to show you what it's gonna look like. So all this right here, that's gonna get tossed or can be used in the garden. This doesn't really melt down any more than that. It's just basically bee gunk and propolis. In order to continue making more room for some more honeycomb or to just be done with rendering completely, I'll use this spatula and straining spoon in order to squeeze out the excess wax from all this junk. Once you get all this gunk out, you'll be left with the cheesecloth and probably a few other pieces here and there. So I will actually hang the cheesecloth above my, um, my crock pot using my cabinetry hardware, the handles above on my upper cabinet. And then I'll just kind of take the same spatula and spoon and squeeze the bag as much as I can to get the wax out of it and into the crock pot. And then I just toss the whole entire leftover cheesecloth with gunk in it right into the trash. Now what you should have left is a crock pot of water and clean rendered wax. You may see a few floaties or a couple pieces here and there that the filtration didn't catch or the cheesecloth didn't catch. 
But keep in mind that you can always take this new block that you're gonna get after this process is over and re-render it in the crock pot again. What I do now and what's happening in this clip is the wax is just kind of floating up to the top of the crock pot and it's just hardening. I usually take the pot out of the actual crock pot and then stick it in my sink and leave this process to happen overnight, but it typically only takes a few hours. Once enough time has passed, you should get something that looks similar to this. You'll have a big block on top of the water. You might have to push down a little bit in order to get it unstuck from the sides, and then it'll just float on the top there. Um, I take a knife and just kind of push one end down with my hand and then grab the other end with the knife to get it out because it can be a little tricky. You could also just kind of drain the water into the sink. It's just gross water at this point. It's not any wax. Um, and uh, you'll, you'll be able to, to pop it out from there. If everything went according to plan, you should be left with a nice, big, beautiful block of wax. As you can see, mine has a little bit of imperfections. It's got some little gunkies in it. But like I said before, we're just making these into Christmas ornaments, not lip balm or anything that needs to be super pure. I will probably be re-rendering and remelting these come the holiday season anyway, so I'm just gonna leave them as is. But if you find that you want to re-render yours, you can literally just stick it right back into the crock pot um, with, on a new piece of cheesecloth or maybe even some sort of coffee filter that has a, an even finer type of filtration to, to really get it super pure. And just repeat the process. This is by far my most favorite and what feels like the easiest way to render beeswax for me. I do recommend that whatever crock pot you do use, you kind of dedicate it to this because it never really fully recovers after this. It's still a little waxy no matter how much you clean it. So I have a crock pot specifically for beeswax rendering and I feel like that's the most helpful. I hope you enjoyed this video and if you have any questions, feel free to drop a comment. Thanks for watching and be sure to give me a subscribe or a follow. Thank you.